Beruchim Haboim, welcome everyone. We're about to begin the Ezra Hashem Adav Chov Dalit Amr Aleph, the very top. The Gemara has told us if a person wants to be Shoimer his Tfilin at night, he can put the Tfilin next to his head. The Gemara concludes that the Halakha is like Shmuel Afilu Ishto Imoi. Ask the Gemara the following question Vehecha Manachlu, where exactly does he place these Tfilin? Omar Biyermiya Ben Kaila Keses. Since it already has one covering, so therefore you can put it between the pillow and the, the, the mattress. It will be a second covering, but not directly underneath the head. I asked the Gemara, Rabbi Chia taught, You can put the tefillin in a kiss and put it directly underneath one's head. Answers the Gemara, the mapik le le marisho the koiva le bar. No. Although he put the nartik where the tefillin were underneath the head, but the tefillin themselves inside the nartik was protruding to the outside, and therefore they were not underneath the head where he laid. Bar kaporo tzayer luhu bekilto umafik lemarshon lebar. Bar kaporo he would tie the sadin, the yiria that was surrounding his bed. And he would tie the tefillin inside that yiria, and again he would make sure that it was protruding out so outwards, not towards where the bed was. Rav Shisha bereid Rav Idi Monach Lohu Ashar Shifa. He would put the tefillin on a safsal on a bench. Upare sudru ilavayhu, and he would then put a sudar on top of it. In other words, again it would have two coverings: the first original covering, and plus the sadin that was going to then make a second covering. Now the Gemara brings us the following Uvda. Omrav Hamnuna Bereid Rav Yosef. Zimna Chada Hava Kaimna Kamei De Rava. One time I came before my Rabbi Rava. The Omar Li, and he said to me, Zil, I see Li Tfilin, go and bring me my Tfilin. The Ashkachtin Hu Ben Kaila Keses, Shaloi Keneged Roshoi. And I discovered that they were placed between his pillow and his mattress, but not underneath, directly where his head would be put. And I also knew that it was the day that he went to the mikvah, and therefore the night before he was together with his wife. And he did all of this in order to teach me that in this situation, where a person will be alone with his wife, and he wants to protect his tefillin, this is the way it should be situated. Says the Gemara with the following question. Boy me ne Rav Yoise bereid Rav Nechunya me Rav Yehuda. He asked Rav, Han, Rav Yehuda the following question. Shnaim she yishen in bemito achas mahu. She ze yachzi upon a vikra kriyashma. Ve ze yachzi upon a vikra kriyashma. If two people are lying down in the same bed. And by the way, the way it used to lie down at night was without pajamas. And therefore, can a person go back to back with the other one and say Kriyashma at night. Omar Lehi, he said to him, Hochi Omar Shmuel va'afilu ishto imo. He said back to him that indeed he can do so and even when his wife is together with him in the bed and therefore he can go back to back with his wife and he can say Kriyashma in this manner. Ask the Gemara, Maski Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef says, you mean to emphasize that even his wife, he can do so, but not with anybody else, meaning to say that, that, that with his wife he can do so, and certainly with others? His wife is like his own body, and therefore since he's accustomed to being with his wife, so therefore, he may not have improper thoughts so easily. So therefore, he can be yachzi upon of the yikra. But somebody else, including his own children, we're saying, that's going to be a problem. Meisvei, the Gemara says, Shnayim she'yishen b'mita achas. That two people are lying down in the same bed. Ze machzi upon of v'ze kore, v'ze machzi upon of v'kore. This Bryce says that two people are lying in the same bed. And he's able to then Go back to back and say Kriya Shema. The another Bryce of Tanya Achriti says, Hayoshim b'mito u'bonov b'nei beiso b'tzidoi. He's lying in the same bed with his children. Harei zeh lo yikra Kriya Shema lim ken ha'yisat halis mefsikes b'neihen. 
he cannot say Kriyashma unless there's a talis that makes a separation between him and his children. But if his children are going to be Ketanim, then he doesn't even need a talis, that's Mafsekis. But you see over here that indeed, that when it comes to children, it's even more Chomor than with one's wife because you need a talis Mafsekis. Bishlam al Rabbi Yosef lo kashyo habi ishtoi haba acher. Therefore, it's good according to Rabbi Yosef because Rabbi Yosef is saying that the first brisa that's talking about where he can then machzir ponov and say kriyashma, that's talking about where he's with his wife. Whereas the second one, where it's not talking about bnei beisoi, there you need a talis mafseki. So it's going to going to Rabbi Yosef. It's very good. But according to Shmuel, le Shmuel kashya, because Shmuel says that afilu ishta imoy, that means more chomor to be with one's wife. And there you would require lechora, a talis that's mafsekis. And yet the Brisa says you don't require anything. Omar lach Shmuel, le Rav Yosef, mi neicha. To Rav Yosef he would say, is this really going to be neicha to you as well? The hatanya. The second Brisa mentions his children and Bnei Beiso. Bnei Beiso includes his wife and still says that you have to have a talis that's Mafsekes Beinehem. Elo, Ma'is Loch Lemeh, what are you going to say, Shmuel? So what are you going to say, Rav Yosef? Ishto Rav Yosef Tanoi. So Rav Yosef, you're going to say that Ishto is a Machlokes Tanoi. That the first Bryce is talking about Ishtoi, and the second Bryce is talking about Ishto and his children. And but it's a machlokis tanoim. So Shmuel says, I'll say the same answer. According to me, also it's a machlokis tanoim. That the first Bryce holds that a woman does not require, when it's his own wife, he does not require him to have a hefsek. Whereas the second Bryce holds that he does need to have a hefsek because the machlokis tanoim. Omar Mar, the Gemara brings back this statement. Ze machzir ponov, vikare kriyashma. Ask the Gemara, vaha ikra agavos. When they're going back to back, but there's still agavos, the back is facing the back. And therefore, the back is touching the back. Messiah le Ravihuna. This is a support for Ravihuna, the Omar Ravihuna, agavos, ain bohem mishum erva. That the backside is not considered to be an erva, and therefore the no problem is saying Kriyashma, even though there's Nagiya from the back side to the back side. Says the Gemara, let us say this is a support for Rav Huna. That a woman is, is able to sit and be mafish chala, and although she's not. Dress, she can still say a bracha. So you see from here that even though she's sitting down and her erva is covered, but her backside is going to be revealed. So it's a support for Rav Huna. Says the Gemara, Avalo Ish, but an Ish wouldn't be able to do that because the front side will be protruding. Says the Gemara, that's no raya. There's no support for Rav Huna. Nachman Kigon Shahoyu Panea Tuchois Bekarka. Because here we're talking about a situation where when she's sitting down, not only is her front going to be covered while she's sitting down, but her back also, for example, she's sitting, let's say, in some sand. So also her backside will also be covered up. Omar Mar Imhayu Bonavu Bene Bais or Kitani Mutter. We said before that a person is in the same bed if his children who are Kitanim, then he doesn't even need a talis that's Mafsekis in order to say Krishma. Ask the Gemara, Va'ad Kama, what's considered to be a cotton? Om Rav Chizda, Tinoikes, Bas Sholosh Shonim, V'yom Echod, V'tinoik, Bas Teisah Shonim, V'yom Echod. A cotton is if it's a girl and she's three years old in one day, that means the, begin, the, middle, the beginning of the fourth year, and when it comes to a boy, nine years and one day, which is the beginning of the tenth year. In other words, this is the beginning when both the boy and the girl are considered to be Roy Labia. Igadami, there are those that say, Tinoikes bas yud alef shon of yom echod, that a girl has to be 11 years and one day in the, the beginning of the 12th year. The Tinoik ben teisha shon of yom echod, whereas a boy, he is nine, he's sorry, the Tinoik ben shteim esrei shon of yom echod, whereas a Tinoik, a boy, is 12 years and one day into the 13th year. Idi v'idi, but both, this opinion says the girl 
who is entering her 12th year and the boy that's entering his 13th year, they both agree, Shadayim Nechoyne Vesharech Tzimeach. That means that it has to be that there are Se'arois, that are their hair that begins, pubic hair that begins growing and that the breasts begin forming. But if not that, even if they're this age, the woman is, the girl is this age of 20, 12 years and one day, she's not going to be considered to be a Godel, but rather she's still Nechshav Akotan until she's 12 years, full, 12 full, full years old. Omo le Rav Kahana le Rav Ashi Hasom Omarove there, Rav said, "Afagav the Tiyufta the Shmuel, Hilchas the Kavase the Shmuel." Rav Kana says to Rav Ashi, "Before when we're talking about putting the tefillin next to one's head, Shmuel had said, 'Afilu ishto imoy, even though that was neged the brisa." And then we said the halacha is like Shmuel, despite the fact that the brisa says differently. Hachamai, but over here, in regards to saying Kriya Shma, what is the din? Omale atu kulu bechada machta machteninu. You're going to say that they're all woven together. Just because he said one thing somewhere else, it means that he's saying that over here. Where he said the din, he said it. But where he didn't say over here, then he didn't say it. And therefore, there's no reason to then assume that the halacha is that a person can do so and say, Krishma, the ishto imoy. If a man has a hole in his undergarment and pubic hairs are protruding, what is the din? Can he say Kriyashma nonetheless? Says the Gemara, Korale, Seyar, Seyar. He said there's no problem, it's just Seyar, and therefore there's not going to be a problem of Erva. On Rabbi Yitzchok, Tefach Bi'isha Erva. Rabbi Yitzchok says if a woman has a Tefach, that is being revealed, talking about a tefach that's normally covered on her body, and it's revealed, it's galui, then he says that's considered to be erva. Ask the Gemara Lamai, if you're going to say it's referring to looking for Hana at this woman who has this gilui of a tefach, Rav Shesha said, why is it that when it comes to the Torah, the Torah then puts together the outward Tachshitin uh, of bracelets and other things together with the inner types of Tachshitin that are Akumas, which is a place where it's put in the, in the Oyser Mokom of the woman. Why is it put these two together? Says the Gemara Loimar. Rav Shesha explains, Loch. That the person who looks for Hana purposes, even at a small finger of a girl, of a woman, that man is as if he's looking by Oysa Makoim. Elo, it must be Be'ish Toivaloi or the Kriyashma. It must be you're talking about that the Tefak that we're referring to that is Golu that's normally covered. This is referring to his own wife that he can't see a place where it's normally covered and now is revealed and say Kriyashba Kenege that place. And therefore, in a practical sense, if a person has a wife, for example, that is nursing, then he would be, have to be careful to send Divrei Kedusha, either Divrei Torah or Brachos or Kriyashma Kenege that, 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 that Mokom. Om Rav Chizda Shoik Be'isha Erva. Rav Chizda says, a Shoik, the thigh of a woman is Erva. That means even Pachos Mi Tefach. That area is an error because that is Ma'ara Hirhur. Shinema it says in the Pasuk, Gali Shoik Ivri, expose a thigh to cross, Naros, the rivers. Viksiv, and it says afterwards, Tigal Ervasech. It says afterwards, your nakedness, nakedness will be re- exposed. Vegan Teorek Herposech, and it's your disgrace that will be seen. So we see from here that the Shoik of a woman is considered to be an erva. O my Shmuel, Shmuel said, Kol bi'isha erva. The voice, when a woman sings, that's also considered to be an erva. Shneemaz, it says, Ki kolech orev umarech nava. Because your voice is sweet and your appearance is beautiful. And again, therefore, divrei kedusha, whether it's, whether it's brachos or tfilois or divrei tara, kriyashma, shall not be said when a person is hearing a woman sing. Om Rav Sheshes, Seyar Bi'isha Erva. The 
the hair of a married woman is also considered to be an erva. Shneimar, as it states in the pasuk, "Sa'arech ke'eder ha'izim." Your hair is, hair is like a flock of goats, and therefore it's a way of expressing the beauty of a married woman's hair, and therefore it has to be covered up. Again, if a person has that revealed hair in front of him while he's saying "Divrei Kedusha," in this case "Kriyishma," then he's not allowed to say "Kriyishma Kenegdo." Says the Gemara Amr of Chanino, Ani Ra'isi as Rebbe, Shetolot Philosof. Here, the Gemara is going to a different subject altogether. It's going on Tfilin, but nothing to do with Erva. If a person, he says, he once saw his Rebbe, Rabbi Uda Nasi, toilet the Tfilin, his Tfilin, hanging them on a hook. Meisve asked the Gemara, Ha toilet Tfilov, Yitl Lechayov. How could he have done that? Because it says that in the Bryce, if a person hangs his tefillin, then they hang, so to speak, his life. Meaning to say that it's a very serious thing. They expounded, Your life will be then hanging, so to speak, from a distance. He was not cov- careful with the covet of the tefillin, then Mida Kenege Mida, then he will not find sustenance to be covered. Only far away, like it says, Mineged. Says the Gemara, Lakasha. It's not a difficulty. Ha Beritsua Ha Bekitsitsa. When Rabbi held, when he, he hung, rather, his tefillin, it was worth the Ritsuois, with the straps. But that which is over here, that a person will be punished as a result of hanging his tefillin, that's talking about when he hangs them with the Batim, the Kitsitsa. The Ibois Emma others said differently. Loishna Ritsua Veloishna Kitsita also. Even the straps of the Tfilin have Kedusha, and therefore that would be also to hang the Tfilin by its straps. The Chitola Rebbe, but when Rebbe tied and he hung his Tfilin, let's say on a hook, how did he do so? It was Bekisisa Tala. He did it with the Nartik, with the Tfilin inside the bag itself. Ihochi asked the Gemara, my remember if he just hung it with the bag. Then what's the Chiddush that he's coming to say that Rebbe used to do this? Mao, the same I might think to say, Tiboy Hanocha Kesefer Torah. I might require that the Sefer Torah be Munach, and just so the Tefillin as well should be Munach, and just like the Sefer Torah cannot be hung even in its Aaron, it cannot be hung to the, against the wall, so too maybe the Tefillin in its Nartik cannot be hung against the wall. Kamash Malan, no. If it's in its Nartik, it could be hung on a tlia on a hook.